Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am going to talk about Kathleen Kennedy, Lucasfilm, Star Wars, and Indiana Jones. Yeah, it's interesting to hear what's going on with Indiana Jones because there's supposed to be another uh, Jones movie, Indiana Jones movie with Harrison Ford in it that seems to be in limbo right now. That might be for the best because the fourth one was, was pretty terrible, uh, in my opinion. But WDW Pro, who was a, a pretty reputable insider on WDW Magic, is actually writing for our blog Pirates and Princesses, which is our uh, uh, opinionated, unbiased Disney and theme park blog. And he put this story up a couple of days ago talking about the situation with Indiana Jones and Kathleen Kennedy. And I want to talk about that because she's been out there trying to make some noise. There's been a lot of speculation that, that uh, Kathy is on her way out of Lucasfilm, that there's uh, a civil war going on at Lucasfilm. We've heard this from multiple people. Uh, we have, you know, Doomcock saying that he has heard from insiders there is actually a civil war going on for control of Lucasfilm. And it seems to be the uh, Favreau and Filoni camp, the George Lucas loyalists versus Kathleen Kennedy and her crew, uh, Lucasfilm Story Group, and all the uh, freaking shaved head, blue haired Star Wars characters that have popped up can be traced back to, to that group, I believe. Uh, so it's, you know, the situation with Kathleen Kennedy is, is weird because when she was first announced as taking over Lucasfilm, I actually was pretty excited because she's been with George Lucas and Steven Spielberg for decades. And, you know, she knows the drill. She's worked on all of these amazing movies. So I'm like, the franchise is in good hands. Uh, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. When she's put in charge, Star Wars has been... Uh, run into the ground in almost record time like Disney pissed away an amazing franchise one of the biggest franchises in the world and they pissed it away and pissed away the fan goodwill in the course of like five years you know the only goodwill that they've got at this point uh, is the Mandalorian and that's coming from Favreau and Filoni's camp not Kathleen Kennedy's although she tries to take credit for it as I understand it but we're going to talk about the situation with Indiana Jones uh, now. And, you know, Kennedy, look, she doesn't have a very good track record even keeping people. Like, Benioff and Weiss are moving on to, you know, the Game of Thrones guys. They're moving on to another series for Netflix. Uh, she's making announcements that she's going to, you know, bring in more, more women to Star Wars, which is fine as long as those women are hired because they're talented and not just hired uh, because of what's between their legs, right? Um, talking about the future of Star Wars, we, we talked about this the other day. There's definitely something up because she doesn't seem to know what the future holds. Uh, she said, we just need more time to step back and really absorb what George has created. Yeah, because you clearly don't effing get it, do you? And then start to think about where things might go. Well, you should have thought about that five years ago, Kathy. And that's what we've been doing. We've been having a great deal of fun doing it and meeting with lots of different filmmakers and talent. Stuff's moving along. It's moving along. We're, we're, we're fine over here. So I think Disney's going to be paying closer attention, especially under Bob Chapek, who is a notorious penny pincher. They're going to be paying closer attention to everything that Kathleen Kennedy is doing with Lucasfilm, with Star Wars, because this should have been the uh, the porg that laid the golden eggs. And it, it's it's been it's been laying rotten eggs. Uh, last couple of movies have not been good. Again, the only goodwill a lot of people feel towards Star Wars at this point is the Mandalorian, and that seems to be the one that she had the least uh, l the least to do with. Although she loves to take credit for it, and so does Bob Iger. All right, coming from WDW Pro on Pirates and Princesses, I'll put a link to that in the description. Indiana Jones and Kathleen Kennedy's continued chaos. It was supposed to be Kathleen Kennedy's magnum opus in the completed circle for her life's body of cinematic work. But chaos has followed the president of Lucasfilm once more, this time in regards to Indiana Jones. Uh, Pro talks about all of the movies she's been associated with, Steven Spielberg and Indiana Jones. She has been associated with a lot of big movies. And, uh, you know, again, I thought she was a good choice when she was announced, but I'm like, damn it. How do you screw it up? 
how do you screw it up so fast? Uh, Candy's portfolio increases over time to legendary status. She's seldom in charge of any particular film, but she was credited as producer and executive producer for a number of movies, including, yeah, Jurassic Park, I think, The Goonies. We watched The Goonies the other week, and I think she was on the credits for The Goonies. So pretty much anything Lucas or Spielberg touched in the 80s, 90s, Kathleen Kennedy seemed to be in there somewhere. Again, again she seemed like a natural choice. But what the hell? So they're talking about how when George sold the business to Disney, she was placed in charge. But the betrayal was deep and the resentment that developed was bitter. Whereas Lucas had felt that Kennedy was a colleague who could be trusted to protect his creation, Kennedy saw the opportunity of running Lucasfilm as an opportunity to finally place her stamp on her productions in a way that would say this was Kathleen's. Shaved head, blue haired Star Wars characters are Kathleen's. She discarded the scripts and outlines Lucas had left for her, sided with Iger in removing the vast majority of Star Wars canon, and set forward on a new sequel trilogy which would have little in common with Lucas's original vision. Yeah, you know, that's the biggest FU. Uh, that was the biggest FU. Disney said, hey, George, yeah, we'll take your treatments. Thanks for putting Kathy in charge. Uh, we're going to run with this. Thank you so much for everything you've done. And they turn around, they basically tossed his treatment in the garbage. Star Wars sequel trilogy, as far as I'm concerned, is apocrypha. This is not what George Lucas had in mind at all. And you can argue about whether or not he still got it based on the prequel tr trilogy. But at least that s trilogy made sense. You know, the acting might have been wonky. The CGI maybe didn't age very well. Jar Jar was annoying, but he clearly had a story to tell. He wasn't making it up as he went along. And that's what the sequel trilogy felt like. It felt like Disney desperately just trying to make stuff up as they, they went along. Uh, Lucas was deeply disappointed, even to the point of calling Disney the white slavers over his creation. His pain over The Force Awakens was nothing compared to how he felt about The Rise of Skywalker. That's interesting because I, uh, you know, he was kind of quiet about that. Whereas Force Awakens had been a competent attempt at producing a pastiche of the original trilogy, which he felt was too dependent on nostalgia. The Rise of Skywalker was the end of Lucas's relationship with Kennedy. George Lucas had always felt that Star Wars was the tale of a father and his his children, specifically Darth Vader as the fallen father in need of redemption and his children, Luke and Leia redeeming the father through virtue. Originally, it had simply been a father and son concept. Later, Lucas had seen the power in bringing Leia in as a two-part sibling system that would represent the best of both masculinity and femininity. Well, Luke Skywalker's a dumbass, according to, to Kathleen Kennedy. He needs to be bitch slapped by Leia often. With the sequel trilogy completed, Lucas was deeply resentful that not only had his characters changed in ways he did not support, but also that the entire purpose of Star Wars had been changed. Whereas the original and prequel trilogies had been about two generations, one fallen from grace, the other redeeming their sins, the sequel trilogy had struck the entire mythos from the completed saga. No longer were the movies about Luke, Leia, and Anakin, now they were about the Emperor. This was something he had never wanted or envisioned, though bizarrely convoluted Palpatine was retroactively changed to be a seemingly innumerable group of clones defeated once by the rebels, but still able to return in the final film for, from some icy realm. Yeah, basically they didn't have a big bad in mind, or I think Snoke was supposed to be the big bad and they killed him off. They killed him off in the second movie because there was no plan. There's no plan. This nebulous foe additionally sired the ultimate protagonist of the films, who not only defeated the Emperor, but then took the Skywalker name for herself. The young man who overcame evil with hope in Lucas' original film was turned into an impotent wretch. Not only had Lucas' canon been destroyed, not only had his mythos been dramatically altered, but his main characters were stripped of their elegance, killed on screen, and then their name that George Lucas had used for his very ranch was taken by the offspring of the Emperor. That's right, it's the Palpatine saga. Palpatine wins in the end. Uh, Pro says the slap in the face was twofold for Lucas, having voiced his serious concerns after The Force Awakens and again after The Last Jedi. Lucas was actually brought in to help write the ship with J.J. Abrams on Rise of Skywalker. Unfortunately, almost everything Lucas suggested was completely discarded by Abrams once he wrote the script. That I've heard 
again, yeah, Lucas, a proud man who felt betrayed often in his later years. This was too damning for the movies. The pain was so real that the last movie in the Skywalker saga didn't even have Lucas attend the premiere. He didn't, he didn't go. So they're talking about how, you know, Disney has run, Kathleen Kennedy has run Star Wars into the ground and how, you know, Indiana Jones could fix this. It could actually be a turning point. I don't want an Indiana Jones 5. I'm going to be honest. I don't want it. Uh, there's a film that would remedy it all. Starting in 2016, the push was on to get a final Indiana Jones movie with Harrison Ford in the theaters. As the Star Wars franchise began to retract in popularity in 2018, after The Last Jedi, it's not fatigue. It's not franchise fa fatigue. It's fucking up Luke Skywalker, fucking up the mythos, and making it very, very clear that this was no longer George Lucas's Star Wars. It did not have his blessing. It was Disney fan fiction. Kathleen Kennedy's fan fiction. Uh, Kennedy saw the Indiana Jones film as the way to finish strong with the very franchise that started her career back in 81. Harrison Ford saw the film as his swan song, a chance to go out on top as the lead in a role he, he most loved. Yeah, uh, hopefully better than uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That's what uh, you know they thought was going to happen with Indy 4. Instead, we got uh, Shia LaBeouf swinging from vines and aliens. Aliens and Indiana Jones. The severe betrayal of George Lucas with Rise of Skywalker soured everything. So Indy might be off the table now because Kathleen Kennedy fucked up the sequel trilogy so badly. While Spielberg had to come back to direct the final Indiana Jones movie, his friendship with Lucas remained strong. And while it came and went quietly due to the pandemic, taking up all the news bandwidth, in February 2020, it turns out that during that month, Kennedy lost another director, and this was the worst of her tenure. Her original mentor stepped down from Indiana Jones outside of a symbolic position and took the script by legendary writer David Kep with him. Spielberg, for all intents and purposes, was gone. Indiana Jones worked on since 2016 would have to be completely restarted. So Steven Spielberg is kicking Kathleen Kennedy to the curb according to rumors by WDW Pro. Quickly, a new director was pulled in that would satisfy Harrison Ford, although reticence existed to get into the new film without Spielberg and Lucas. Ford loves Indiana Jones and wanted to end it on a high note. While he may get his wish, the change in directors pushed Kennedy to the side once more. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. She was, as I understand it, out of the way for much of The Mandalorian, and that's the only Star Wars that's been uh, quasi-decent since Disney took over, right? Uh, whereas she had asserted her creative ideas with Spielberg during the development of the film, the new director, James Mangold of Logan, came in with a clean slate and a need to please Harrison Ford. Uh, worse for Kennedy, the window for Indiana Jones release was forced to move from 2021 to 2022, and out of her opportunity to take credit for the movie. Rumors that Jon Favreau is being groomed to take over after Kennedy's contract expires are plentiful, with Favreau and other Lucasfilm employees still having a relationship with George Lucas, especially Dave Filoni. Kennedy is truly left out on an island. This would explain why she's trying to drum up so much PR, right? Uh, Kathleen Kennedy is, is trying everything. Like, oh, we got this High Republic thing. And we got, you know, Obi-Wan coming and I'm hiring more female directors, but we're just stepping back to see what George wants. We're stepping back to see what George wants. Well, you didn't give a shit what he wanted up into this point. Why would you care now? Just to save your job? Save face? Uh, the movie will almost assuredly come out after her tenure without the touch of Kathy. It won't have Kathy's fingers on it. So Indiana Jones is a final disappointment for Kathleen Kennedy, just like Star Wars. It too has slipped from her grasp another surefire win that eluded her to the very end. Poor, poor Kathy. Poor Kathy. Well, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's what happens when you stab people in the back. Uh, maybe you get what you deserve. Maybe, you know, people realize that Kathleen Kennedy can't be trusted with other people's stuff because as soon as she gets the keys to the candy store, uh, she makes it all sugar-free candy. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah. I, I believe this. I, I do believe this. I think that they're basically pushing back as many projects as they can using the pandemic as a cover. Like, oh, we can't move forward on this because of the pandemic. In reality, they might just be stalling out Kathleen Kennedy. Like, yeah, just wait until after Kathy's gone. Look what happened with the High Republic. 
they they did this big promotional push for the high republic it landed with a thud they had whiteboards where they had all these bullet points that they were gonna you know more shaved head blue haired characters uh you know more lucasfilm story group bullshit i mean she fucked up galaxy's edge it could have been an original trilogy it would have been a potter killer and it's it's just lame it's like knockoff star wars right their next big thing is the high republic it looks like trash People are, are trashing it, mocking it fiercely online. They're pushing that back. Uh, and it's going to come and go quietly. I don't think it's going to stick. It's basically she wants to rewrite the expanded universe. And uh, I don't think it's going to go well. The best thing you can do, honestly, at this point, Disney, is I'm not saying erase the sequel trilogy, but step over it, work around it, and uh, don't let this woman touch anything else. Just let her let her bide her time until she's out the damn door, and I think that's what Disney is going to do. Bob Iger is not here really to protect her anymore, and right now Disney has to make money. They're losing money daily. Uh, theme park attendance is not up. They don't have any movies out. They they got to make money, and Kathleen Kennedy is not making them the kinds of money they should be making off of Star Wars. She has successfully killed the Golden Goose. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Again, a shout out, big shout out to WDW Pro. Go check out the original story on piratesandprincesses.net. And we'll talk to you guys later.